All right, so in this lesson, we're going to talk about the basics of head structure, the very beginning components of looking at the model, the head, the skeleton head behind me. That's kind of where we start. So today is about know your proportions, right, and, and hit your landmarks. So know your proportions, hit your landmarks, and you'll be good to go. So anytime that we talk about head structure, we want to bring in the, the certainly the skull, but make sure that we also bring down the neck. So head and neck together, know your proportions, hit your landmarks. Okay, I'll be right back, stay tuned, and we'll get started on that lecture. Okay, let's get started. So we want to take a look at the basics of head structure. And anytime you do that, you're going to be looking at the skull of the human figure, the skeleton the skull, etc. So it comes in two parts, really the cranial area here, this top area, which looks obviously kind of like an, an egg form, especially from profile, and then the mandible area, which can be, which actually can be separated, can actually come off in through here. If I uh, tilt it over here upside down or, or underneath there, you can see that it's a separate kind of V-shaped form. So whenever we take a measure, whenever we look at the head, we will always start with the you know structural components of the skull, looking at it, uh, looking at it from the front, but also we'll bring down the neck too as well. Uh, for the most part. We won't necessarily do that uh, today, which is a little ironic, but uh, we'll all always talk about the head and the, and the neck together. Okay, so the first thing I want to look at is in head basic head structure number one is the, the shape of the form of the head when we draw it. Okay, and that is in the front, this base structure, the cranial structure, which is an egg form. So we want to know our proportions of that. We want to know the shape, we want to know the form of it, and we want to know the kind of basic relative proportions. So let's take a look at that uh, now in our drawing. So we'll start out and we'll do this in profile, okay? And we'll look at that first, this first component of the skull, and I've got a a diagram up so you can continue to see it here to the right of your screen so you can you always can see that and I'm just drawing this out of my head at this point so we've got this basic movement of the the cranium and profile I'll put profile up here so we'll see that because there are many different directions and so we've got this kind of gestural movement this way in down this way, which kind of gives you that profile. First thing we look at is that egg form of the head. Okay. The next thing we're going to bring down the front profile of the head this way, so we get that gesture moving this way. Okay, and then moving down this way and through here. This tends to make the end of the cranial section right in through here about halfway down from the top through here over kind of like a square and as we bring down the facial structure down you'll see that this whole system from here up to over to here starts to make a almost square kind of a rectangular square okay what do I mean by that when I say rectangular square well our facial area, our face mask area, is a little bit longer in the front and just slightly shorter from the distance of the egg here. So shorter, you're short, and a little bit, little bit longer here. But it, relatively speaking, it makes just a slight rectangular uh, square. So I'm going to put our rectangular square up up and through that section. So that means that as you're drawing heads from the live model, from photographs or your imagination, you have a a standard, a standard model which with which with to work from. So this is our standard model here. However, we all know that differences of ethnicity, differences of gender, of age, all matter. So remember that when we're looking at basic head structure, we're looking at a standard. A standard model that we can all 
start from. Where you wind up will take deviations or anomalies, I suppose, if you will, that take you on very interesting journeys. And if you do creature uh, drawings uh, or uh, creature design or character design for animated films or for live action films, they still use the standard model. And they deviate wildly from it into animal forms that are kind of human-like, but also animal forms. So keep that in mind. So we, we have our rectangular square form. So we're always a little bit longer. If you're going to make an error in head drawing, make it here. Make this, you can make this even a little bit longer. You'll be okay, okay, in that sense. Now, in terms of bringing this, giving this a little bit more expression, we want to bring down this cranial structure. This is a very important side plan. You'll, you'll, hear me, you'll hear me talk a lot about the side plan of the head, especially my students at NKU. We'll bring down, I'm going to kind of feather that, that temporal muscle that sits on the side of your head that helps in chewing and mastication of the jaw up and down. The side plane profile, very, very important. You see that side plane often. Okay, so that's first thing to, to kind of start to get used to. And it winds up about halfway down our model. So if I put a little arrow over here, that's about halfway down our model. Now, coming down to the end of the chin, right through here, this straightens out a little bit. Okay, the area it has to for your throat area. I think there's just a little bit of a straight line that you get. Hopefully I'll have it on myself, but you get a little bit of a straight line and profile here. And then the esophagus and the trachea, your breathing and your eating tubes come off of that. So there's a little bit of a bony kind of straightness that happens with that, with that skull. So you want to bring that down, which gets us into a little bit of a measure of the neck. We'll always, I didn't lie to you, we'll always bring down that neck too as well. I think that's important. Head and neck work together. Now, generally where the neck comes into the back of the head is about that, roughly that halfway mark. Not always. So I'll bring it down through here. Okay, it comes out like so. Okay. Sometimes it comes a little bit higher. Sometimes it comes a little bit further in. But you don't want to come too far in, right? Because you start to miss your proportion. Okay, uh, you know, if you get this too large, you get this too small or too rounded, that can mess up your proportion. So you're always looking for that cranium to be in egg form, and that's why we spend a lot of time talking about spheres and also talking about uh, egg forms because they're so relevant and they, they, you can see it in the head, especially in the pro profile view. So we're going to reconnect now with the structure here. Tighten this up a little bit, bring that neck down as it comes into the cranial structure about halfway down, curves in a little bit, and then it starts to come out in through this area. So we can start to see that even more fully. Now, you know, something else to be mindful of is as we bring down the facial profile here, okay, with our relationship, and again, remember this is about half and half, halfway down through here half here, half there, okay? And with just a little bit of length, a little bit longer in the face, a little bit shorter in the head. About halfway through here, we can start to feel that jawbone come down, okay? That mandible come down a little bit. And we can see the natural sort of curve of that mandible structure kind of angle off relatively in this direction. Everybody has a little bit different feel to it, but for the most part, a standard model, you'll see this angle off in this way. Okay, so now we have a workable uh, profile structure to start to hit our landmarks in as well. This can come back a little bit maybe. Uh, Epiglottis, the, um, the Adam's apple in through here can work pretty, pretty nicely in through there. And of course we have the back of the neck attaching right in through the base of the skull there. So what's interesting, I think, as we start to hit our landmarks, okay? And I'll do these in blue so we'll see them a little bit differently. And I won't go too much further 
than this. this. This particular lecture is about know those proportions and hit your landmark, and that's it, your first tip. Of course, bring down your neck as well, okay? So we've got essentially a square for profile, and then we make it just slightly longer for a rectangle. Okay. Now, if the person is screaming and yelling, this might come down even further. Now, you adjust to what you see after that. But you hit your standard model, and you adjust beyond that. So, the next stage is, as we go halfway through our model here, that becomes the center of the eye line, okay, where the eyeball sits inside the pocket of the skull. The brow line falls slightly above it, just slightly above, to varying degrees of specific specificity, how about that word, of specifics or specificity of your model. Some males can generally have more pronounced brows, Females have less pronounced brows, so us males, no matter your, your ethnicity, look a little bit more Cro-Magnon <laughs> than the females do. That's just the way, the way things go. So the brow line sits in through here. So if I can start to draw that a little bit further, we get a little bit of a, a movement outward from the cranial process in through here, and then the brow starts to come out. Okay, Then we move downward. Okay, this moves, this eye socket wants to move downward in this direction. Okay, and that starts to open up this area so that the center of the eyeball now it will protrude out a little bit. We can see that right in through there. See how it sits in there? Okay, that starts to protrude out. So the end of the egg is generally about halfway down the head. Okay? When you draw, when you draw the, the head from the future from from reference from the live model, draw, relax. Keep this in mind, okay? Keep it in mind. Don't get too flustered with it. And it will serve you well the more you practice. Okay, I think that's that's particularly important is to know that as well. Alright, so bring down that jaw there. The next feature I want to show you, and notice we just started going in halves. We have the top of the head, we have the bottom, which is the chin, in through here. And by the way, the top of the head we're talking about from now on is the very top base of the cranium. I think that's an important note. And the bottom is the bottom of the chin, in through here, as we're hitting our landmarks. So, from the center of the eye line to the bottom of the chin creates another measurement. Halfway through that process in our relationship of halves now, halfway through that process is where the very bottom of the nose sits. And what I mean about the very bottom is the underneath where the nostrils sit, where the, where the actual nose completely in. So I'm trying to pick my nose with this thing, but you get the idea. Right in through here where the very bottom of the nose will sit. So we can mark that on our model. Okay, and then we can draw a, a standard model of the nose. So we have the nose, we have that tip of the nose coming down in a slight angle where the bottom of that nostril would meet. See that? Right there. So it's a very standard kind of model with our figure. All right. Notice that the majority of the action of the head, all the features happens halfway down to the bottom part of the model. So here is all brain, the action happens below that, all the expression, all the wonderful qualities of singing, and being happy or being angry or being bored or being intrigued, mis mystified happen in this region. The next measurement I want to show you is the bottom lip measurement, and it happens again halfway down the model. 
from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. We can mark that in our landmarks. So know your landmarks, right? So the bottom of the lip, the very bottom where it ends, right in through here. So we can bring down a measure of the top lip, bring it in, bottom lip in a standard, standard model that will end right in through there. And then we can bring down the chin, round that out, make it a little bit stronger and bring that over. And now we've got a profile system of a ratio. Know your proportion, so your proportion in profile is roughly a square, okay? Halfway through vertical gets you roughly the jawbone. So I'm gonna push it out just a little bit through. Halfway over gets you not only the center of the eye line, but where the general neck will connect to the back. You gotta be careful bringing it. See how it looks a little bit too odd, too skinny. This could come through a little bit, okay? And then it's the a ratio, after we get halfway down, of halves, all of these are halves. So we have the eye line, we have the chin, half of that's the bottom of the nose, and then half of that's the bottom of the lip. Now, what about the ear positioning in profile? Okay, so roughly the ear lands where the brow, and then we give even more deviations through this, the brow, in through here, I'll bring that over, and the bottom of the nose, I'll bring that over, okay, in through there. So we have that as a placement holder for a shape of an ear. Now, we get many different varieties of ear, of ear sizing and placing. Uh, in this posi position, you're going to get more of the question mark look. You're going to get something that in the English language, you're going to get a question mark, right? A little dot there can be a question mark. Or it could be a little pointier and up if you want. You get a lot of varieties. It could be rounder if you want. A lot of varieties to choose from. In the opposite profile view, you get a C shape, okay? So I'm going to place the ear relatively within these proportions, okay? Maybe a little bit higher up and a little bit lower down, but I'm just going to Fill in that shape as you get that idea coming through, okay? And then we have the back of the neck, muscle trapezius entering, entering this direction. And this little neck, mu this neck muscle in the back, the sternocleidomastoid muscle, comes from the sides, and we'll talk about this anatomy later. I'll just throw in, in a little bit in through here where we get the clavicle. But I'll just get a feeling so you can see that for now. This muscle in the back hits that, hits that area. And I'll throw in just a little bit of the jaw, the cheekbone, in through here so you see it coming down. Notice how it comes down at this, this particular angle on the model. Of course it comes back up in that direction too to get the minimal in through here. So that gives you the profile standard proportions that we know now and the landmarks that you want to hit. We've got all our landmarks, the brow, the eye, the bottom of the nose, the bottom of the lip, bottom of the chin, and we can now reasonably place our ear inside there as well. And then we have a little bit of movement for the side plane of the head to put that muscle on top. Okay, now let's go on to a front view of the head and let's know our proportions. Let's hit our landmarks. All right, let's look at the front. Now, the front's a little bit different. I wanna show you the proportional relationship to the head. So we're gonna talk about this top part of the uh, skull from about this underneath part as if we've taken the mandible off right in through here. It makes a, an almost kind of a perfect circle and we're going to build a proportional relationship through here. Basically two parts wide to three parts long and I'll show you how to get that. 
And so you'll have that relationship kind of etched in your mind, in, in your, your muscle memory as you're drawing the head over and over again. So you can use that no matter your model and no matter their age or their ethnicity or their gender. And then you can deviate from kind of our, our standard basic model, which is, which is a skull. Okay, so let's look at that now. And we'll start, I'll write up here again, uh, standard model. I want to make that clear that most of us deviate from that in some unique, interesting, unique, fun, beautiful, really, way. All, I think all, all forms of, of humanity can be, can be quite, quite beautiful. So uh, let's talk about how we get to that, that model now. So now I've got an image to the right so you can see that of the skull. And that front part of our model of our standard model head is more spherical in the front and also kind of the back as well. Okay, so we have that round feeling, that feeling of volume and form. Very different though from the egg. Remember the profile was this, right? This sort of funky flat egg form, but now we have this round form. So if we take this form and we, in our mind, we split it in two and make two parts from it. Okay, let's make two parts here. We'll make top part and bottom part. And now we have halves. Okay, with me? So that's two, two parts here. If we take now this half part measurement, and I'll put, I'll put a line down the middle too. If we take this half part measurement, we can see it in this way. So we'll take the opposite kind of curve in figure. So I'm looking at this measurement about this length and through here. Bring down this longer rectangle. So about right in through here in that direction, okay? So what this gives us now is we have, before we had two parts, okay? Now we have one, two, three equal parts to our front skeletal standard model head in through here, okay? The top, so that's the length. Okay, so that's the length. The width is two parts. Okay, so one half here and then the other half here. So I'll bring that down through here, bring that down through there. Okay, and so we have a front ratio we can say of two. To three. Okay, two parts at the top, three parts on the side, or on the length. Now I'll bring down the center line. So let's finish this out and make this look more head like. Okay, and bring down the neck so we'll know our proportions, we'll bring down the neck, make it look more human, and then we'll hit our landmarks. Okay, so. Let's make it look more human. So now we can start with the cranium through here, like we know it to be. Bring this down. Here's where the bottom of the chin would be, right in this, in this area. So we can start to bring this down. Start to shoot for it. We'll give a little expression to the jaw, about right in through here, to make it look more human. Okay, we'll bring this down, we'll shoot for this jaw area coming through, and then we'll shoot down to the chin, about right in through this direction and through there. And so now we have um, a place to look at the human figure in a front of you that's more normative for the, the two to three ratio. So two, about two, two forms, 
in length, three form, excuse me, in width in three forms in length or height in standard post. Now you're going to get a lot of variation later on when a head's raised and in perspective and pushed back and pushed over, but this is our clear view starting point. It really works for, for everybody in the beginning. So, all right, and then I'll bring down this neck a little bit. We always want to put on a neck a little bit. Neck gets wider as it moves down, moves down the body and through here. Okay, so it's kind of a, just a standard neck in through here. Let's start to, in this particular model, let's start to find uh, our landmarks even further. So we want to go back and say we know that we have the top of the head. Okay, we have the top of the head here. And we have the bottom of the head in through here. Now let's hit our landmarks as we draw. And this can happen very quickly once you get this down. So remember, halfway down, the model and profile is where we found the center of the eye line. That seems to be the key component of every view. So halfway down here, remember this is, these are thirds, halfway down feels about right in through there. So let's bring that over right in through here. And now we've got the center of our eye line in through here. So we can push that through, okay? Now remember the brow hits right slightly above the eye line. That's the one I find next in through here. So there's our brow line slightly curved up, almost in kind of a furrowed brow, almost like an angry position, if you will, right in through there. So there's our brow. We can start to see that it's already starting to become uh, a lot more human-like with our, our, our positioning. All right, so halfway from the eye line, just halfway, half the head, down to the bottom of the chin, bottom of the head and through here, halfway down that area, is again where the bottom of the nose lies. Okay, right there. There's the bottom of the nose, right in through there. So that's the very bottom of the nose, by the way, where the nostrils touch, the nostrils hit in through here. Okay, that's going to be very, very important for you to get. I'll kind of start to flush that out just a little bit so you start to see. You see that hit right in through there, where the nostrils in. And if you remember, we're going to find the bottom lip, the very bottom of the lip where the lip ends, and that kind of straightens out to get to the chin, we'll find that. So from this measurement here to the bottom of the head, which is the chin halfway down, about right in there, would you say? Yeah, you don't want to you don't necessarily have to have a ruler to measure this out. You just feel that proportion because you're always gonna you're gonna move off the standard model. You're always gonna move off the standard model. I don't know who that person is that's standard, but it looks like a, a stiff mannequin, kind of a super perfect, asymmetric, boring individual that nobody knows because we all deviate. Maybe supermodels are the only only ones that don't deviate. A, a true sort of sort of supermodel beauty, we've scientifically we've found out that there's there's extreme amount of, of symmetry, which is really rare actually in the human the human figure. So to finish this out, to hit our landmarks, here we have the bottom of the lip right in through there. So we start to feel that connection. All right. Now we need the ear as well. So remember from the bottom of the nose, okay, to the brow right in through here, right was where we can start to find the placement of the ear. And of course, in this kind of view, they can be pushed like that. They can attach here and attach there. If there's no lobe, there could be quite a bit of lobe like that. Uh, there's so many deviations and so many different uh, uh, formations of the ear. But essentially, from the brow to the bottom of the nose gets us a good place to put the ear. I want to make mine a little bit shorter in this 
and I'll have a little bit of love in through there. Okay, so we can bring that. And of course, there's two of them, so you can bring that over. I'm going to make sure, okay, right in through there, and a little bit of, a little bit shorter in my particular view. You can do your ears any way you want. It's up to you. Just know that they're, they're, they're positioned between the brow and the frontal view and the bottom of the nose, generally speaking, right in through. Right in through there. Okay, so we've got a much more human looking relationship going on with our model. Let's bring down, uh, let's start to bring down the, a jawbone a little bit in through here. You can start to feel this rhythm in through here, okay, from the cheekbone to the jawbone, and we can start to feel this moving down, this system moving down in this direction, in through here. So we can start to feel the side plane starting to be chiseled in a little bit, almost looks like a gladiator mask a little bit in a standard kind of model. Now, if you'll notice on the skull, and you can start to feel it and see it right in through here with the forehead, the skull is shorter or narrow actually, more narrow in the front than it is in the back of your head. So more narrow as I bring it up, more narrow here, if you took calipers, than it is here. So what that looks like from a very top view is you get this, right? So that's a very extreme top view of the head. So what happens right here and right here, we get a view of the side plane of the head here and here in a very straight frontal view. So meaning that this brow, okay, comes in a little bit like so. You'll see that very cleanly, very clearly in the human skull. So we can start to just pull this over a little bit in like this. And it's where this starts to flatten out a little bit and where the temporal muscles, the muscles that aid in chewing and moving your jaw up and down. If you chew a lot of gum, like if you're on an airplane and you chew gum so your ears don't pop, when you over chew like I do sometimes, uh, the, the side of your head gets sore. Some of you hopefully maybe have experienced, experienced that, that issue. So we see that side, that side plane in through here. Even in a front view, we see the side plane. Why? Because of it, the, narrowest, the narrowness of the top view and the width wider here to here in a back view. So look how much more we're seeing. So we're seeing this area in that area in a top view. I kind of think that's important to, to realize. So I'll bring down, this makes kind of a natural curvature in a chin in a standard view and I'll give them a little bit of a cleft view just, just because I can, just because that, it's kind of a, it helps to see forms a little bit. So we'll clef, cleave that off a little bit in through there. And so we've, we've got the, the center of the eyes in through here, okay? And I think the last thing I, I want to say about uh, hitting your landmarks is the size of eyes. Uh, they, in a very frontal view, profile view, you get five eye lengths or eyeball lengths in width for the entire width of the head. So from here roughly to here, there's five eyeballs wide. All right, what does that mean? Well, we'll take the nose in through here. Okay, and I'll put the ball of the nose, if you will, in through here. This will deviate downwards, like so, and then on, on through. I don't want to get too specific. The nostrils will come in through here. The base of the nose, the cranial base, starts pretty high up in the brow. 
in through here, and I'm going to symbolize it with just sort of a a slightly elongated tube line because I don't want to get into a lot of complexity in the nose. I'll do a whole section for everyone, for my students, for whoever wants to watch in YouTube land on the eyes, the ears, the nose, and the mouth. It's like being a doctor. Eyes, ears, nose, and throat, but we'll say the mouth in this, in this sense. It'll give you a little bit better, hopefully, understanding of where these final landmarks hit. But the, the point here is that the, the, the nose comes out of this up way up here in the brow area. Okay, now there is a nice, sometimes it works out with the, the length of the, the nostrils, but there is a plane here on the skull in here that jut out, okay, like so. So this gets wider in this direction. This fans out, I can shade it a little bit so you can see it. It's right here on the skull. Students miss this often, unfortunately. Right in through here, so there's this, this plane that goes on right in this direction that is more than uh, where the start of the eye is. The eye starts, the eyeball starts in through here, so the tear ducts are in through here, so that plane moves over. So let me show you then where we would place the eye. Okay, so the actual brows in through here, they may come down a little bit low. We don't want we want, don't want our male to crow magnet, but I want you to get the idea that that does overlap. So our eyeball length is about this much, okay? And that's a measurement. Center of the eye in through here, center line roughly in through here. You can have a little bit lower if you want, a little bit higher sometimes. Just gives you that standard motion. So here's our eye, okay? Now, that length of the eye, here to here, I'll put a little bit of a pupil in the iris. You can see that in through here. This length from here to here is about five, okay? So, we have here to here is one, two, across the planes of the nose, underneath that brow that furrowing that comes in like that, comes out like that, roughly. So one, two, three, okay? That gets us almost to the length of the nostril. Sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't, depending upon your model. Then we have the next length of the eyeball. In through here, okay. And then we have this here. This just seems to be a little bit wide. So if I was going to take this, I might push this eye over just a little bit, just to make it a little bit wider. And I could actually bring my model in a little bit, just to make that clear. But the overall feeling is a standard of about five eyes. This actually could be a little bit larger. That would help. Maybe a little bit wider in through here, over and just a little bit wider in through there. Okay, so the standard is here to here, I'll put my pupil in, my iris in through here. The eyes can be, certainly are not necessarily symmetrical, so we'll, we're trying to make this as symmetrical, symmetrical as we can for the standard model. So we have right in through here, the end of the cranium, right in through here. Okay, we have one length, we have two lengths of the eyeball in between where the nose is, that's three lengths, then we have four, and then we have the length out here is five. The, the kicker is, the important thing is not to make them too big, not to make them too small. See, students make them all the time way too small, they put the eyes up too high. Uh, or they make them way too big. Now, if you're drawing animated creatures, you always want to start from a standard model, like, like anime, Japanese anime with large eyes. Learn to draw in a way that you see the standard model and everything, and then deviate. Find out why, those of you that love, you kiddos out there that love anime, find out why, why that is a style. Find out what is the conceptual reason for enlarging the eyes.
Okay, and then draw that when you need to and when you don't. Don't draw it. I think there, there's plenty of ways to draw the human figure with anime and then also additionally to that. All right, so we have the, the five eye links worked out, and I'm going to put a little bit more of this brow cup in through here. This can flow off in this direction as well. So we start to see this brow as it starts to move to the top of the very top of the head, obviously right in through there. And so lastly, we might come in and we might just throw a little bit of kind of a standard uh, model lip coming through. So that kind of worked out pretty nicely with the end of the nostrils. This little section where the end of the nose is right here, between where the end of the nose is and the top of the lip, it's called your philtrum. And I don't know necessarily what, what it's for, but I do know this is there. And if it wasn't there, you would be freaked out by your parents if you saw them, or your children, or your best friend, or whomever. Um, anyway, it's a curved device in like this, it curves in like that, and you can feel it on your own person, right? It's shaved in, so it, it comes out and then inside and then back out again. Um, and so we have that there. There's the top lip coming through. Okay, and then I don't want to get into, I don't want to take a long time with lips. I'm just going to show you the shape. If we come in through here, we kind of have a V at the ending. This can be very pronounced and very different in many different models, especially female, these tend to come down and over, like so. We feel that through, if we feel, start to feel this curvature over through here. Lip comes down through this way. We have a pinching on the cheek in through here, in through here. And then we can bring the bottom lip starts here and it curls underneath the top lip. So the bottom lip goes underneath the top lip then overlaps a little bit of the bottom lip. And then we'll hit the bottom lip right in through, right in through here. Just to give a very general standard lecture. This is, this is very standard stuff and you'll see this in a lot of different different lecture. Slightly different but of the same. Bring that cheek down. And then there's a there's a, a movement here straight roughly straight through. There's a movement here that you get kind of straightens out and then we get the chin comes down in through there. It ends like that in a very kind of cleft chin. Alright so to review We've got, we found our proportions, which were based off the circular central form, right? Two of those with another half makes three, okay? So we're at three at the, on the length, and we're at two on the top. So two to three, which is different from profile, which is almost about equal, just slightly off, right? So it gives us a two to three profile. We found our landmarks, or hit our landmarks, based on the center of the eye. So the center line, eye line, of course, we have the, the, the front, front line, too, as well, that keeps everything kind of holding in in the front. We also know now that we get a side plane view right in the front even. Why? Because we know now that the head is narrower in the front in wider in the back. We also know now that our, that our eyes are about five eyes wide. Okay, which is very important not to make them too big nor too small. I wouldn't say there's a Goldilocks proportion because we have different standardized models, but this will help keep these in, I think, a nice uh, relationship. So. The neck, just to give you something briefly here, is wider at 
the bottom because we see not only these muscles coming through that connect to the sternum in through here, which gets us to the clavicle. I don't want to get into much into that. But we also see the side muscles and then we see the trapezius, the back. So this is actually part of your back muscles, these side muscles in through here, and then there's an opening in through here, which gets you the pit of the neck, which is very fleshy and uh, quite open, actually, meaning that you can reach the rib cage, and it has a kind of a circular feel for the rib cage, right in through this direction. So I think that's I think that's important to know in through here. So you get this coming in, and that's the pit and neck in in ancient times, ancient Rome, Greece, probably all throughout the world. If you wanted a clean execution, you would take a sword, stand behind the person, and drive the blade of the sword right through the pit of the neck, which would get to the heart pretty quickly. So it was a fairly I guess relatively painless death. I don't ever want to know, but I think you get the idea. So the pit of the neck, I think, is important, and it shows up quite a bit in in many different uh, viewpoints. Okay, so now what I, what I want to show you is I want to show you quickly the back of the head. It's basically the same proportion as the front, two to three, and then start to show you a couple of side views.